entrepreneurial, design-based, and uh, extraordinarily innovative business in its own right. Please welcome Don Owens. Hi, everyone. Great to be here this afternoon. And what I'd love to do is actually continue the conversation that John and Dave were having. What does it look like to create e-patients by the millions? And not just those that are motivated to get engaged in their health care because they get that fateful call one day, but actually people before they ever become patients to think about their health and to actively participate in health, actually creating consumers in health care. So we're going to share a little bit of insight around what's happening in that uh, arena and uh, some, uh, some of the results. So first off, who is Optum and what right do we have to talk about consumers or patients in health care? We are a company of about 30,000 individuals dedicated to helping make the health care system work better. That means better outcomes for patients. That means more sustainable cost structures for how we finance and fund care over the long term. And certainly patient satisfaction, a system that works for them, that is easy for them, that is understandable for them, and helps them achieve their health goals and outcomes. We do that on behalf of almost every single participant in healthcare, from those who are financing healthcare, from the governments to employers, to most of the health plans in this country, to as well working with the delivery system, from uh, health care providers in hospitals, physicians, nurses, and so forth, as they think about what it looks like to modernize their environments, to transform them, to create better costs, better outcomes, better performance. And as a result, we work with about 60 million individual consumers in healthcare. These are people who need support as they navigate through a very complex and often daunting system. Uh, every day, we're talking to about 30, th excuse me, 300,000 consumers or patients in healthcare. Whether it's, what does it mean to manage my depression and how does that impact me as it relates to my diabetic care? to how do I finance this health care that I'm now um, responsible for, and, uh, or how do I lose weight or change my diet and exercise more. Now the question I'd be asking myself in this room is, why consumerism? We heard Dave's story and we heard the need for patients to get better information, to get access to, I would say, current relevant information that meets their needs, but why should we care about consumerism beyond the empathy factor that, that he spoke about? And I would say it comes down to two pretty basic things. First off, today in this country, you all know, we spend a lot on health care. And we probably don't get all of the value we think we should for that spending. Whether, whether we're talking about things like covering everyone in our nation, how much resource it's consuming, or as it relates to the healthcare status of us as patients, as us as a nation. Um, you know better than I that the state of the state as it relates to the health of our nation is not so good, not something that we feel particularly proud of. We don't take care of ourselves well, very well. And it's not just that we've got a lot of chronic disease, but that that chronic disease that we have, much of it is preventable or impactable. So what has been the response in this healthcare industry in supporting people like Dave? And when, when you hear industry speak people talk about consumerism, what are they talking about? And what have they and, and, and what has it looked like to support consumers in healthcare? And I would say largely up to this point, it's been about sharing more cost. The theory has been if I can get people to wake up and pay attention to healthcare differently, because they are now sharing in more cost for themselves as they are not only uh, experiencing the healthcare system, but they're funding that cost of care, 
They're gonna pay attention more. They're gonna take better care of themselves. They're actually gonna do what their physicians tell them to do as far as compliance with treatment protocols and so forth. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna wake them up and the wake up call is gonna be that we're gonna ask them to participate in greater cost sharing. So that was the motivation of things like consumer directed plans, which now 41% of all employers offer. But it's more than just those plans. Over the last few years, consumers' expenditures around healthcare have more than tripled because of this trends towards getting more skin in the game for individuals to participate and pay attention. And it's not gonna stop. In today's environment, most uh, employers say that they are contemplating either continuing to shift costs or actually getting out of the game altogether. Um, and so you gotta ask yourself, has it made a difference? Has, has sharing more cost actually created better consumers? Do they pay attention more? Are they e-consumers, engaged, empowered, active, taking responsibility for their health, not just when they get a diagnosis, but well before one ever occurs? And the reality is, I'd actually say probably not. Now, that doesn't mean that we're not making progress. You can look at lots of studies, lots of individual uh, types of programs in different environments and see that people like Dave are getting involved in their health. People are changing the way they live and thinking about and acting upon their health. But we've got a lot of room for improvement in the way in which we approach health care today and how consumers are active, engaged, well before they ever become patient. And it makes a difference. Uh, Dave's actually a great example of this. Um, when you think about it, when you look at cross populations, which generally what, again, a business like ours gets paid to do is help, uh, for payers anyway, help manage populations, help them achieve better health outcomes, help them improve their health status, help them uh, produce uh, better cost profiles for that care that they're receiving, all with an eye towards patient satisfaction. And knowing who to engage, knowing who needs to be that e-patient, actually makes a huge difference because 5% of any one population can drive as much as 50% of the cost. And when you look at market segments, it can even be more exaggerated. As you get into the seniors market, that trend even becomes magnified. So finding the right people to engage is really important. So you might sit back and say, well, then it's pretty easy, isn't it? Just find those people, get them engaged, get them the tools, get them the resources, connect their physicians, connect their nurses. Voila, the internet makes it easy. We're good, we're golden. Guess what, dirty little secret, those 5% change every single year. They're not the same people. So it's a little harder than you think. And certainly, uh, we know that those individual decisions and behaviors do make a difference. I, I love the, the reminder that my health status depends more upon me and the decisions that I'm making than any other factor in my life. And I will say, even as an individual, I'm a bad patient, I'm a bad consumer in healthcare. So we started to ask ourselves, is there a better way of doing this? Is there a better way, again to John, to your question, of supporting patients as they navigate through this healthcare system? Can we create a way that allows them to feel more empowered, more engaged, more actively in control, and to improve their overall health and status? to uh, improve the sustainability from a cost standpoint, and to actually improve satisfaction. So we did a couple novel things. First off, <laughs> we asked patients and consumers. Um, we didn't look at it for what we care about. You know, We thought, oh, you should care about evidence-based standards and who's best uh, able to provide best quality outcomes for your care. Uh, we thought about that consumers should think about price shopping and all those things that we think consumers should care about. Well, when we ask consumers what they care about, their needs were much more fundamental than that. Because candidly, they expect us to do our jobs well. They expect us to be connected with one another um, across the system and across all the participants in healthcare on their behalf. And, and you actually heard Dave speak about that a little bit. What they need is for healthcare to fit into their life. And that means that, that as they navigate that system, that it factors in their needs for time. The most precious resource an individual has right now is their time. 
they, uh, as a result, are very focused on how does it may become convenient for me. Now, obviously, that changes when you've got a life-threatening illness and, and you have, you're told you have weeks to live. But generally, I want it to be convenient for me and to fit into my lifestyle. And I have to be able to afford it. So what we did was we took these insights along with many others and said, we are going to try to change the way healthcare operates in the lives of individuals. And we're going to start with one population. So we took a group of 2,000 individuals. And we said, we're going to change the way in which you experience healthcare. And instead of me telling you what that looked like, I have a short video that will go through that. And then I will explain how we made that happen and how we approached it. But let me share with you how we took 2,000 people and changed the way in which they uh, started thinking about healthcare and trying to create engaged e-consumers. <laughs> quotes uh, continue. But, you know, John asked the question, how do you get people who, who are not ready to engage to engage? And we started to look at it different. And as a result, you saw that most programs that are geared around consumers to get them engaged in their health care get about 10% of people participating. This program, 75% of that 2,000 population actually participated in this program. And we took a lot of time to research and understand uh, how that worked for them. And here's what they told us. They said, A, you helped the healthcare system easier for me to navigate. It wasn't so intimidating. It wasn't so complex. And you became a trusted source in decision making. By the way, this wasn't us becoming a trusted source. It was the healthcare system on a patient-centered manner becoming a, a trusted source on behalf of the individuals that it's serving. And that as a result, these individuals felt more empowered and more informed. So I draw out a couple things that I would say were keys to the success of this program that I think are very relevant to this audience. First. And we're doing this now across the country, working with partners from health plans to health systems as to make this a reality and real for communities and populations of individuals to, to get them to think about and act upon their health in different ways. First and foremost, it was 
It was local. We took advantage of a physical plant. You know, we are generally, we spend most of our, our work waking days in our, in our workplaces, and so we leveraged the heck out of a workplace environment and transformed it to make it health convenient and relevant for those that were in that population. But we also brought in the healthcare delivery community. So we worked with a local health system, local uh, physician groups and other provider groups to partner with them on what this program needed to look like on behalf of and in support of these individuals, uh, consumers slash patients. Secondly, we made the program highly relevant and highly personalized. This can't be just some generic thing that scales. It's got to be real for me. It has to focus on what my needs are. And to do that, you need to understand the needs of the population, what, what's happening as far as their health, what are their needs and opportunities, both at a qualitative level as well as a quantitative level. And then you need to put programs in place that are highly personalized. And again, this is where technology and the web can make it so much easier than ever before. Connecting information, whether that be clinical and administrative, along the kinds of tools and support that patients need to achieve their health goals, to navigate the system, was a really important ingredient. And then finally, it needed to be easy. We needed to bring health to the individuals as opposed to having individuals have to go to the offices and find health care to find the ways in which they could get better nutrition and to, to understand that better to um, access the system. And one of the examples, and, and I noticed that you had the Cisco telehealth um, set up outside, we brought telehealth into the equation and leveraged that to uh, streamline access to clinical care providers um, for individuals to make it more easy and convenient, not just um, uh, dependent upon the individual to do the work themselves. Now, if I'm sitting in this room, I might be asking myself, how is this relevant to me? And why should I care? And, and I think I've heard this said already today, even, and I think has been a theme throughout this uh, time together. The world of healthcare is changing. It is transforming. And that transformation creates an interesting environment where the traditional roles of payers, health plans, employers, the government, to manage population health, to fund that, to be responsible financially for that population health, to apply tools and resources to help consumers navigate the system, the world of that and the care delivery system are coming together. And the care delivery system increasingly is going to take on the roles that traditional players had. They are going to be more responsible for the health of the populations, even to the extent of being responsible for the total cost of those populations and the management of them. So I would argue that understanding the role of the consumer in healthcare um, now becomes mission critical in a new way, and it doesn't work without active, aligned, uh, intentional participation from the entirety of the system, because patients are confused. They hear different information from the different parts of the system, and so for it to work effectively on behalf, it has to work better together. So in summary, I would say consumers are a, a, a very important, but I would say also often missing ingredient in transforming healthcare. Um, getting e-consumers or e-patients is much more than about motivating them but it's finding out how we can become relevant for them in their lives, the way they work, the way they operate today, and healthcare has not been set up from a consumer perspective. Um, I would go so far as to say, as we look at how the marketplace is going to change, the future winners and losers will be shaped somewhat by how effectively they um, embrace and understand and harness the power of consumerism in healthcare. And like most things, making very positive change is easier said than done. So with that, I want to thank you for your time and uh, look forward to partnering with you together on how we can create consumers in healthcare. Is that your folder there? Yeah. All right. Congratulations and thanks, thanks so much. Um, all right. Well, moving right along here, let me give you a couple of tweets, uh, a couple of good ones, from one from this morning. 
Uh, treating chronic disease is a team sport. Sanjeev Aurora's uh, great presentation. There are food deserts in the U.S. People are starving, starving from Michael Murphy. Um, this conference makes me tweet too much. <laughs> it's my favorite. We need to be in the global space to save ourselves, referring to uh, Joe Kohler's presentation. And uh, this tweet just in, if you're going to break your leg, make sure you're passed out from uh, Dave's session, uh, you know, which is terrific advice uh, on so many levels. Um, our next presenters uh, represent.